We are turning our attention to the power sector. And that's because, according to a report, Nigeria's economy depends heavily on small gasoline generators. And according to this report, their collective capacity is eight times more than Nigeria's entire national grid. It's a report. And whether or not that is, and with all of the talk we're getting about recapitalizing the discos, about infusing some more resources into transmission from the AFDB, let's, we want, we'd like to explore some of these issues this morning. We have uh, the rector, Kaduna Polytechnic, and a solar energy expert, Professor Idris Bugaje, in our Abuja studio. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Professor, we also have an energy expert in the person of Mr. Yahaya. Yahaya, thank you so thank you much for joining us this morning, gentlemen. Uh, let's begin with you, Professor Bugaje. Um, Cardinal State recently organized uh, a conversation on the power sector. Uh, it's an academic institution. The nat natural question is to ask, what exactly interested your organization in organizing that program in the first place. Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigeria. Well, we organized the national discourse just last week, and uh, it's an annual event, and we take topics that are very critical to the economic development of Nigeria. And for this year, what we decided to talk on was on power. This was because power is the foundation for the economic development of any nation. And if we can't fix the power sector, then we can't do anything else. And it has other multiplier effects. For example, growth of industries, growth of employment, security, and so on. And if we have to secure Nigeria, create employment for the youth, we must fix the power sector. That's the fundamental one. Um, so th that was the reason, basically, and we brought experts, a lead speaker, Professor Sambo, and some lead discussants, and even the minister was there, and we were able to discuss this very thoroughly. And a communique was issued, and uh, it is being published today, and I hope government and other stakeholders will look into the recommendations made from that discourse. Thank you, but let me ask you this frontally again. Yes, we have, uh, yes. everyone has been talking about the, the various... Uh, subsects of the power sector in Nigeria. Let me ask you frontally, yes. do you think we have a yes. power sector crisis or a power crisis? Which one is it that we have? What are we dealing with? Probably both. You have already mentioned the situation of the, uh, you know, small scale private gasoline powered generators, which is not only unhealthy for Nigerians who operate them. You know, you ha we have carbon monoxide poisoning as a result of these of those generators. But more critically, the kilowatt hour generated from small generators is too expensive to run any economy. The national grid <clears throat> gives you power at a cost of 25% of what those small generators are, are, are producing. So no economy can run sustainably on generators. We are competing with imports from China. In China, power is subsidized. We are not asking for subsidy in Nigeria. But at least let us produce it on that large economy of scale so that the industries will be able to grow. You could see how industries closed down in most parts of the country, except Lagos and the surroundings, due to the lack of power. And therefore, in Nigeria, what we have is both the power crisis and also the, 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 the availability of the power which is very unfortunate to say that we generate seven gigawatts and yet only five could be distributed. This is very appalling. And therefore, something must be done really to fix it. The discourse must be thoroughly reviewed. The capitalization that was done about in uh, some couple of years back, uh, I think must be reviewed seriously because they are not delivering. And uh, we are happy, of course, with some of the measures taken by NERC uh, by, uh, by asking the discourse to immediately uh, you know, pay off the unpaid power they, they distributed. 
Uh, but that's not even enough. Something must be done very thoroughly in order to bring them back on track. Otherwise, the economy will never grow. Unemployment will continue to increase. Insecurity will also continue to multiply. Because without power, there would be no employment for youth. Without employment, the country will never be secure. All right, so, so let's come over to Lagos uh, and speak with Mr. Yahaya and get your views. Now, this talk about recapitalization sounds like a big word, especially for power users in the country. What matters is, I mean, I need electricity. That's the major thing for them. But then we cannot ignore the workings of the sector. Look at the front page. Nigeria spends $14 billion on generators yearly. $14 billion. That's about 5 trillion naira. Yeah. It's mind-boggling. I mean, looking at our, <laughs> our budget, it's about 10.3 trillion naira, and we spend half on generators annually. So this talk about recapitalization, what does it mean? Do you think that's the major challenge of power sector generation, distribution, and what have you in the country? Um, thank you very much. Um, speaking of the lab, uh, talk about the major challenge, and I'll talk about the issue of recapitalization. There are many issues that actually plague um, the, the power sector. And like we have always said in the industry, it's not a quick fix. You know, the, the, the regulator must um, continuously propose policies that meet the peculiar needs of, 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 of our electricity market. Now, where are we? We currently have, as you know, that we know that um, the, the, since the unbundling of the power sector, we now have an interdependent um, Nigerian electricity supply industry. What we have now is that we have an installed generation capacity of over 8,000 um, megawatt. Um, the TCN, the transmission wing, have just upscaled uh, their wheeling capacity of energy to about just over 7,000 megawatts. And we, we uh, right now, the discourse, the 11 distribution companies collectively cannot boast of wheeling the energy that has been delivered by the TCN. I think at, 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 at most, we are picking at just over 4,000 megawatts. That means we have over 4,000 megawatts of energy stranded on the grid. So what you we know, have... That, that usually confuses me, forgive me for okay. buttoning. <laughs> um, yes. um, first of all, you can't store power, can you? Exactly. Power is not like water that okay. you can store. So you can't store it? No. So we generate 8,000, you say? 7,000 megawatts, you say? We have a capacity to generate over 8,000 megawatts. Okay. But what we have is that the, the Jenkos, the existing installed capacity, cannot deploy that capacity. Cannot because deploy meaning they cannot produce? they would not will it on the TCN because the distribution company, it is no longer news, it is not a secret that we'll find the distribution companies technically rejecting load. So what you have is that you can only will what the distribution company can so, take. I, I, help me understand this so that okay. you know, the listener also can follow. Okay. What is it that makes it difficult or impossible for the discos to receive what there is a large market for? Infrastructure, infrastructure. There's a 4.3 billion US dollars infrastructure deficit in the distribution network collectively across the nation. They need to invest on distribution infrastructure. Many of the lines are old and a cake. Many of the transformers are outdated and they're incapacitated. They also, and not to even mention, sorry, I have to retreat on this, of the 4,000 megawatts that has been delivered to the distribution companies, give or take, they are, they are consistently, since privatization, they have been unable to account for over 50% to the Nigerian bulk electricity trading. So they have to invest in military systems, they have to invest in training and retraining their manpowers, their substations, and whatnot. And this is why we are calling for recapitalization of the Nigerian electricity supply industry. So is it for distribution? or for the transmission, or for the generation, or generally? It's a general overhaul, but if we have to set a scale of preference, I would think um, the weakest link currently, uh, the, 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 the industry has built a strong reputation of trading blames. It is your fault, it is your fault, it's not mine, it is you, it is not me. But we have been able to identify where the weakest link is. They all have their peculiar issues and their peculiar challenges, including even um, the Jenkos and the transmission, which appears to have um, gotten some short wins. But currently, the weakest link, visibly so, is the distribution companies. You, you know, 
Okay, sorry. Incidentally, we try to reach out to the discos themselves yes. so that I mean, who could come in yes. and you know have their own side of the story heard as well. Yes. You know, but because this talk of you know recapitalization is something that will give some people concern. I look, it's it's an investment. So how far, so far, and all of that. You know, but one of the things a number of people would also express concern about is that so discos have issues. It is not new. It is not unknown. What is being done about it? One of the considerations that a number of them have factored in is the fact that f within these discos, there is still some measure of ownership of the federal government. Could that be one of the reasons that they are unable to perform as they ought to? Yes, um, I, I hear two questions. Um, on, on the issue of ownership, the, the private sector actually owns 60% of distribution companies and um, the government owns 40% of distribution Consequently, the companies. discourse cannot take unilateral decisions. Well, currently speaking, um, according to the Privatization Act, the government has just a seat on the board and why the disco has six. I personally and some industry experts will agree with me that the government should actually have four seats on the board, which is commensurate um, to the investment or to their ownership on the board, why did this co-retain six? So that's 60, 40, and that is, um, um, that's a hundred percent. I think that is fair, it is equitable, it is natural. And the shareholders agreement executed um, by the distribution companies and the government perhaps should be looked into. On the issue that the disco, the disco has a problem, I think the sector has a problem. Um, but you have identified the discos as about the weakest of the links? Uh, well, today we're talking about recapitalization and I'm actually advocating for the discourse. I'm not here to, I'm not going to join the industry um, <laughs> to, to point to, to trade blames. Okay. I think the disco, of course, um, are plagued with a lot of challenges. For example, um, um, it is no longer news that they have been unable to charge cost-reflective um, tariffs. Um, the peculiarity of our market, I think they are, they are really challenged with Why electricity theft. Why are they theft. unable to charge cost-reflective tariffs? Because the regulator has put a cap on it, um, um, looking out for the effect of high electricity markets on the economy and the end users. Okay, Let, let's, let's talk to Professor Bugaje. One of the things that a number of people have also raised is that, you know, perhaps the idea of privatization hasn't been fully uh, expressed in the power sector. Some have referenced the telecom sector as a template of how a fully privatized sector can work. Uh, do you see it as uh, something practically considerable, you know, to say that, look, if the communication sector can be fully privatized and consequently working and stable as it is with a regulator, you know, taking charge, uh, can we replicate the same thing in the, in the, in the power sector? Well, for the power sector, there are some peculiarities. And I think... Privatization was rushed right from the beginning. We were not ready to privatize that sector because the generation was not high enough even for the privatization. Look at the per capita generation in Nigeria. It's one of the lowest in Africa. Even if you talk of 7,000 or 8,000, divided by popula population of Nigeria, that's about 40 words, 30 to 40 words per head. South Africa has 270 words per head. Egypt, with 95% access, they have about 400 words. If you go to Europe, it's about 1,000 words per head. So our generation capacity, not even the distribution, is too low for privatization. But that has already happened. We can't reverse it now, but we can review it. I don't think we need to do full privatization like in the telecom sector. This is because if you look at the best practice across the world, if you go to Malaysia, we have Tenaga National. Tenaga National is still 100% owned by government of Malaysia. And of course, they are in charge of the transmission and overall uh, supervision of the whole sector. If you go to South Africa, we have ESCOM. ESCOM is also owned by the state. So there are aspects that need to be privatized, but there are some areas that need to be maintained by the state. This is because power is very vital. The point raised by Mr. Heer is very valid that government has not given 
proper attention to the discourse. How can government have 40% share and you have only one board member among seven on the discourse boards? That's very wrong. There should be 40, four number of uh, government representation on the board. And how could the private sector produce both chairman and MD? That's also very wrong. This discourse don't even allow anybody to look at their books of accounts because of the, you know, undercover things they are doing. And uh, some of them generating billions while failing to pay the uh, NBET, you know, the appropriate amounts of power they have consumed. So there is need for review. Government should put proper attention. And uh, there may be even need to allow states to buy part of this 40% uh, uh, government share. And there should be proper representation on the board so that decisions are taken in the overall interest of the country, not in the interest of a few private pockets who decided to corner the discourse uh, when it was privatized. So I believe there is need for government to maintain presence in some sectors, especially the transmission area. We need to uh, maintain uh, government presence. I don't support full privatization of the entire sector. Right. So I'd like us to go back to the talk about recapitalization. Sounds like a big term, but basically saying we need more capital. Let's get more you know, investment. And the big question is, where are we expecting this investment to come from? Don't forget, we have raised some challenges with the power sector, how it appears as though the blames keep going round and round. But the big question is, an investor who would want to come into any sector obviously wants to make profit. So are we really ready for that recapitalization in court? And where do we expect it to come from? Don't worry, I'll come to you, Mr. Yaya. But I'd like uh, uh, the professor to answer in Abuja. Thank you very much. Well, we need, to re we need to recapitalize, surely. The first question to ask is, the discourse that bought over this 60%, what more capital have they brought into the sector since the takeoff of this privatization? Very little. As the, my colleague said, you know, the, 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 the infrastructure is so archaic and no, no major improvements, you know, have been added. So there is need, surely, to bring in more capital. There is need to open up. But we have to also be very frank with ourselves. We also must review the tariff. Because this is one of the lowest I have seen, even across West Africa. I have gone to Ghana, I have gone to Gambia, and I've compared the kilowatt hour, uh, you know, one kilowatt hour price, uh, you know, converted into dollars. You, you can see that Nigeria is one of the lowest. I'm not saying we, we jump into an immediate, you know, increase of tariff, but when the power sector stabilizes, we must review the tariff, especially those for industries and other, you know, uh, income generation sectors, we need to increase the tariff. So we need to open up for recapitalization, surely, so that we can upgrade the infrastructure even government needs to open up to allow states and others to come in and buy shares among the balance of 40, and then we need to therefore uh, recapitalize. But surely a review of tariff must be done. Otherwise, uh, you know, the, no, no, no investor would like to put his money in uh, because people invest money in order for the investment to grow. So I think there's need for us to review the tariff at an appropriate time. But at the moment, those who are already in the sector need to bring in more funds so that we can be able to improve on the uh, technical state of the of the power sector. Very important, otherwise it will never grow. Right, you, you know that tariff talk is what consumers, a lot of consumers don't exactly like to hear, but let's come to Mr. Yahya and allow him wade in, into this matter. I, I see that you, you have a few points to, to raise, so let me just allow you get in. Um, you know that um, the distribution companies have actually, um, the NEC, NEC, Nigeria Assist Regulatory Commission, they've actually requested the distribution companies to submit a five-year plan, um, 2019 to 2025, on how they intend to recapitalize um, their distribution infrastructure. I think um, severally and collectively, um, they've, they've submitted, um, I think, totally about 943 billion um, Naira plan for recapitalization of, of, their, of, their, of their investment. But what we're saying is that, um, you asked a question that um, who is going to do this um, injection? Who owns the disco? The private sector and the, and the government. So really, um, everyone should meet up. To, uh, everyone should hold up to their end of the obligation. The discos, um, just like Professor rightly identified, um, so many people are of the opinion that they haven't really injected. Um, 
the, the, the desired type of investment that is required for this type of critical sector in an economy. Um, but or, or they, they've, they've also spoken and they've expressed many of their concerns. Private sector is, a, is an issue of the chicken and the egg. Private sector is a natural economy. If you want to put money in a sector, you want to be assured and guaranteed with your return on investment. Well, um, the private sector is in the business of making money putting it simply. So if there is no guarantee that they can recover the investments that they're putting, there will be no incentive that they put that money in. So um, there are some words that have become very touchy in Nigeria now, you know, subsidy, intervention, you know, recapitalization. They, are senses, they, they, they appear to be sensitive issues. But if the government is going to continue to maintain a cap, and to regulate the affairs of what the, the business of the discos can charge, how much um, they can sell electricity, and what not and what yes. That means that you are stifling their guaranteed return on investment. So if you want to do that... Tariff hike. Perhaps. Yes, yes, you, you have to charge a cost-reflective tariff. Like Professor rightly identified, this is one of the lowest in the world. And um, for you to want to, and I, we understand where the government is coming from, because um, you want your Suya man to be able to pay for electricity and whatnot. And the regulators respond with a lot of policies. Yeah, ironically, Suya men don't exactly use a lot of electricity. Yes, they but they, they should coal. be able to. But they should be able to pay for their electricity. Right. Yeah. And that, that's another issue because there's about thirty percent um, that I, I I call them omitable customers. Your Suya man, your pepper seller, these they just tap electricity, and it is it is a a, a huge who, volume. To, on whom do we, you know, at whose table do we put this buck that you're raising now? Mm -hmm. Because one of the issues a number of people have also raised is this whole idea of metering. So um, the NBET, for instance, is saying that the responsibility that uh, the discos have mm -hmm. of returning certain resources, the, mm -hmm. the, whatever purchase they make from the Jenkos, they're not making these returns as and when due. Yes. So the, one of the Issues that a number of people have, a significant number of people in the country, by the way, yes. are having is that of what they call, uh, what does that think of charging? Right. Or, or crazy like billing? Estimated, crazy bills, estimated, yes, estimated, estimated, billing. estimated yes, you know, yes. billing system and all of that. Yes. To the fact, to the effect that it even got the attention of the Speaker of the House of Assembly, or yes. of, the, of the House of Representatives. And it's a legislation. And, and you know, so... On whose, at whose table do we put this buck that you are raising? Because even the, the discourse that you are advocating for at this moment, yes. they haven't been able... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an advocate for the discourse. <laughs> that you, you know, uh, they, they, are, they themselves have the issue yes. of even meeting the, 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 the general demand, the basic demands of giving prepaid meters to people. Yes, but the, 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 the regulator has actually responded to this. I don't know if you are aware of the meter asset provider regulation of 2018. So what this has done is that they have introduced a new market participant in Nigeria energy supply industry. And this uh, market participant, which is the MAP, which was um, shortlisted, they issued no objection, and then pre-qualified by the distribution company, and then licensed licensed by the regulator. They now have the obligation now to finance, um, install, operate, and maintain metering assets. So basically now you can choose to pay for your metering assets in cash, which I think is about 30 something thousand for single phase and 67,000 there about for three phase. And if you're unable to pay cash for it, you can also um, arrange like a financing model and an instrumental payment. And then the interesting thing is that when you pay for your meter, the distribution company is supposed to give you some energy credit, which is supposed to get back for the investment of your of your infrastructure. The metering deficit currently is about 4.7 million meters across the nation. This is a very wild margin. Um, the regulator has put a target to be closed within the next five years, which um, the maps, um, the discos, the regulators are following very keenly, and I think we should get somewhere. But just as I've always said in, in many interviews, is that the challenges in the power sector are no quick, quick fix. And we can never exhaust, um, exhaustively solve all of them. Continuously, we are going to have power challenges. And continuously, we have to have a robust and competent regulator who will continue to provide innovative solutions that meet the peculiarity of our electricity. Do you see the NRC doing that? 
I think the NERC has been very um, responsive. Um, we've had quite a lot of very interesting policies this, um, these days. Um, I'm particularly very excited about the eligible customer policy, which is a willing buyer, willing seller, which is once you can um, take energy of a certain capacity, you can, uh, you can decide to wheel it directly from TCN, you can connect directly to a Genco, provided you're able to pay for it. So we are getting to a more uh, a, a, a better and attractive electricity market. I think the map, the discos have continuously, uh, quote unquote, failed to meet our customers. Every day there is outcry of estimated billing, crazy billing, which is unfair and unequitable. I, I got to, anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know, so the response of the map is very good and is very timely. What I'm ex particularly excited about and waiting for now is the franchise policy. And what this will do is that, you know, the discos were sold as a region. As far as I'm concerned, people keep comparing the power sector to the privatization in telecoms. What we have now is privatized regional monopolies because there's absolutely no competition. It's, let's go quickly to Professor in Abuja. Um, this Dalberg access to energy uh, study that we've been referencing you know, all the while talks about an opportunity. But before I go to that one, we have dealt with a number of issues here this morning. How much of these issues that's been raised, especially as, especially among the discos, which uh, Mr. Yaya here calls the weakest of all the links in the power sector, how much of these are, are made possible or the fault of human error? Yeah. Well, sorry, I didn't hear the question very well, but uh, no, the discourse, let me, let me, there are so me, many issues. Let me, let, me, let me go again, Professor. How much of these issues are human in nature? Well, a lot of them are human, uh, in the sense that distribution companies exist in other countries of the world, and they are performing perfectly well. Um, but in Nigeria, our investors are a little bit greedy. And they tend to corner things as if it is like, you know, uh, a personal uh, property. I mean, people don't see, if you invest, that you should also have social responsibility, whereby you try to deliver for the good of the economy of the nation. Unfortunately, that is missing in the way the discourse are being run. And unfortunately, NAC, NERC has also been, there's, a, there's been a lot of luxury over the past years. It's only recently that uh, they started sitting up doing the, the appropriate things by giving uh, matching orders to the discourse. So I think there is a lot of uh, human, uh, not only, I wouldn't call it human error, hum, human weaknesses, or what you may call aspects of the Nigerian factor, you know, playing out in the way the discourse are operating. One of them is this estimated bill. This is one thing which the discourse are defrauding Nigerians. Two months ago, I fixed a meter where I have been using estimated bills for the past two years. Every month, 30 to 35,000, every month. And in October, I put meter. And after metering, the same 35,000 is now lasting me two months. So which means I have been defrauded over the past two years. So Nigerians are really being cheated through this estimated bill. Three, four, five years is too long a time for us to meter every Nigerian consumer. I think we better speed that one up so that let's create the metering companies within Nigeria. Let's manufacture the meters in Nigeria. We don't need to be importing them from China. Let's manufacture them locally here so that we can be able to uh, meter every consumer in Nigeria. And uh, as I said earlier, we may need to also review other, other, other areas uh, so that we'll be able to have a balance. But this, this is not just a, a, a human error. I think it is a deliberate human error or maybe the Nigerian factor. Uh, playing out, and I think something must be done quickly to stop that. And the NAC is waking up from its uh, slumber, and we hope they will maintain the tempo so that uh, the discourse would be able to play the game properly. All right, now while we focus on that conventional uh, power generating sector, there's also the talk about renewable energy, solar, which I know you're an expert on. And I'd like us to look into that for a bit, because if we're saying that we need more power, we need to also look into alternative you know, power generation mechanisms. So solar is something a lot of people have talked about. But then when you look at the cost 
of, you know, fixing it. I, I mean, it's almost times five, times ten, you know, of buying a generating set. So in Nigeria, what are the potentials and how do we latch on to this big, you know, gold mine that is in the solar uh, energy sector? Yes, we need to review the national energy mix. At the moment, we are concerned only with hydro and thermal power plants using natural gas. That is inadequate, and that does not give us the necessary balance. We need to, therefore, bring in solar on board. Nigeria is very well endowed with solar radiation. We have solar radiation figures that are almost three, four times what we get in Europe. Yet Europeans are now moving into 30%, you know, Solar, solar in the energy mix by 2030. So in Nigeria, it's extremely low. The initial cost of uh, solar installations used to be higher than the conventional, but at the moment, they are now at par. Uh, recently, some about nine or 10 Northern state governments attempted to do some power projects, about 14 in number, totaling about 2,000 megawatts. And uh, all of them, they were going to produce power at the cost of 7.5 cents per kilowatt hour, which is at par with the thermal power, power plants. So the cost has come down very drastically because of, of, of new materials that have been uh, introduced in the production of the PV cells. And uh, at the moment, one megawatt, you only require just about one billion naira to put it up, which is one of the low, I mean, it's at par with the thermal power stations. So Nigeria needs to therefore open the door for solar, th uh, for, for solar PV power plants to be established across the country because we are well endowed. Almost throughout there, we have solar radiation. Not only that, we need to also introduce embedded generation. Most of these power plants, solar power plants, should not join the national grid. They should create mini grids around them so that these interventions can feed specific areas like industrial hubs, hospitals, uh, universities, polytechnics, and other institutions of higher learning, so that we try to divest more power away from the national grid. When you put power on the national grid, there is a lot of transmission losses. And then it has to go to a center. Before it, is, it has to go to Oshokbo, all the way to Oshokbo, before it could be distributed. Now, TCN has created another center in Shiroro, which is a very positive move. And, uh, but in spite of that, we need to, uh, to bring in embedded generation. Embedded generation means you do not take your power to the national grid, you generate it, you distribute it within a mini grid in your vicinity so that you take care of the local needs. We need to do that, especially for the northern states. Northern states are facing very serious challenges of insurgency, serious challenges of kidnapping, armed banditry, because people have no jobs. No industries are working. Most of the industries in Kaduna Kano have closed down. Many have migrated to Lagos. And unfortunately, therefore, they have left behind poverty in the trail of that. So for that reason, we need to bring in power to these areas so that the youth can be employed and that way we can be able to address security challenges. So we'd like to encourage more government support for embedded generation using solar PV. Unfortunately, Since previously about there has been a lot of bottlenecks. Professor, one moment. One but moment. I, believe I believe with the one new... One moment, Professor. Still talking about governments... What do you think the states can do about this? Because I remember at some point, you know, some states wanted to uh, kick in their own independent power programs at the state level. Very, very quickly tell us, don't you think the states, the state governments themselves should be able to intervene in this matter? Why not? At the moment, there is a total monopoly by the federal government. The federal government and the private sector, I think that is very wrong even though power is not in the exclusive list, but practically the laws that surround the power sector are making it to look like a federal government exclusive list. So there is need to open up, to allow states to come on board, to create you know, regional grids, mini grids, so that we'll be able now to have more generations and better localized distributions of power. Professor. States must be given key role. Okay, Professor, uh, let's uh, bring it to, to Mr. Yaya. What do you think of that? Um, just like Professor rightly identified, you know that um, during the privatization, the distribution networks actually acquired franchise areas. So basically, when a distribution 
company actually acquires a franchise area, they actually um, have the exclusive jurisdiction to distribute electricity in that area because they, they, they have the monopoly because they acquired the distribution infrastructure in that area. So, but how can the states come in? Is that uh, um, the state can come in, the state can assist as um, a way of social uh, economic contribution and perhaps um, if they so wish, um, donate equipment, transformers, or whatnot to the distribution companies. But if they don't want to do that, and they don't want to be reliant or be at the mercy of distribution companies, there are actually a lot of off-grid models, which um, NEC has actually um, uh, proposed a lot of policy that works on that. We have, um, they can do captive, they can do um, solar generation, off-grid, um, they can do embedded power plants and whatnot. And what, what, what they can do, let me give you an example of ca captive energy, for example. They can have a captive generator. Um, power plants, wind, solar, they are all generators. So maybe you can have a power plant, a gas-fired plant, and they can actually serve particular critical infrastructures like your schools, your hospitals, your street lights and whatnot. And at the end of the day, what you are trying to achieve is that the, the, the ordinary man on the street does not want to hear all the torrenti that we speak. They just want lights. Power. They just want power. Yeah. And I think um, there, are, there are many contributive um, policies or activities that um, the state government can actually do to, to contribute to this. Well, you, you referenced the solar sector, well, solar alternative the other time. Yes. What stops the state governments or states from taking this initiative with or without, you know, the, the you know, other encumbrances that could be standing in the way? For instance, um, if, as you said, the states decide that, you know what, let's invest in solar energy because of our people, mm -hmm. how does it work? How does it feed the people? Or are they going to have to set up their own transmission and uh, distribution infrastructure? There, there are different models that you can use to wheel energy. Um, for me, I think in this part of the world, solar is, as a matter of personal opinion, is well suited for rural areas you know, um, places whereby it is not economically viable for the distribution line, for the distribution companies to run their lines there. Let me give you, for example, quote unquote, there might be a village in somewhere as far as um, a manufacturing a name, Kotonkarfi. And in that Kotonkarfi now, perhaps there are just 10 hamlets there. For the distribution company to wheel perhaps 30% of distribution line to that place, a transformer, a substation, and then metering points, they might never be able to recoup, to recoup that investment in God knows 40, 100 years. But if you got, they are able to deploy off-grid solar technologies there remotely, you know, they can, they don't need much light, you know, um, in the rural area, they don't need, they don't have much need for electricity, like, like you and I, oh they have 40 devices you are charging every five seconds. I don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, but for them, but for them, you can just have a, a solar panel which generates the much needed energy for them to do the little things, at least for them to have a basic standard of living. Mm -hmm. I think that when we want to talk about large scale power generation, it is a bit expensive to use solar and um, well, you, you might say it's not as climate friendly, but for now, I think gas is one of the cheapest way of, power, of firing electricity. I was, going to, I was going to reference the cost of yes, the solar. Right. Yes, but, you know, yes. one question that has bugged me for years, yes, I'd just sir. like to put it to you briefly, is this. How hard is it for distribution companies to have a weekly or monthly schedule of when power will be available and stick to it other than Season the power at the most random times. I, I, don't, yes. I, I can't count how many people have, have got you know, heart issues just because you yes. know, light goes at that point. So how yes. hard is it? Yes. You know, I just want to understand to have a shadow follow, and stick to it. Follow that up with the fact that back in time, yes. there will be announcements by ECN yes. that there's going to be power outage between this hour yes. and this hour. Yes. So can we return to those days? Well, um, I think that that's a step further, actually. I think many, many African countries have been able to achieve that. I think Ghana runs a similar policy. I think um, Sierra Leone too and whatnot. It's because they are struggling. Those people always have the view, although sometimes they do it, People have the view that the distribution companies just sit in their station and it's just like those people in Ikeja, they hissed at us the last time off the lights. 
that's not really how it works. Many times they actually have technical complications and their feeders strip off. Their feeders strip off, um, their transformers catapult. That's why we are saying recapitalize them because their equipment are failing. So we'll, we'll enjoy this for the time being. Yes. Well, yes. Man, <laughs> definitely, I don't think the private sector who yes. run businesses yes. can endure this for very long because, I mean, it's exactly. gonna, it, it has very reverberating effects, one of which is a string of job losses. Yes. We definitely don't want yes. that. But we have to thank you very much for being a part thank of this. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, solar uh, expert, as oh, well energy as expert. energy expert. Yes. Thank you. As well as Professor Idris Bugadja, Rector of Kaduna Polytechnic and solar energy expert in our studio in Abuja. Thank you very much, Professor, for being a part of this conversation.